So, like I was saying, you want to always make sure you retain the rights to your publishing. Retain the rights to your publishing and make sure that no one, um, even though you may sell the beat to them, you need to do a licensing agreement, not a outright work for hire. You always license it for a specific amount of time. That way you can continue to use the beat or if you need to resell the beat or whatever, you can do that at a later time. But you always want to retain the right. So when they release the single, say for instance, they say, hey, we're going to drop the single or we're going to drop this album and your song got placed on it. I mean, your track is placed on it. Um, once you find out that the song has actually been released or will be released, you want to make sure you get their publishing information, right? And then you want to take that publishing information and add it to your ASCAP account with their name, their publishing company, um, and if they have an IPI I number, if they're with ASCAP or BMI, you want to make sure that you link the right accounts um, and then include the percentage of ownership and, of course, like I said, their publishing name. All right, number number nine. For a song as well. Uh, can, uh, can we address for a song? Like if you're going to sell a song to uh, someone, what would be a good... Uh, for if you're selling it to a label or you're selling it to somebody in your city that's not blown up, like what would be kind of... Uh, what would be a decent raise that you would feel like it was fair? I mean, I, I, will, I always ask people what's their budget because it kind of gives you an idea of what to be, like from an independent standpoint, if this is an independent artist that you're selling to locally, I will always ask them what their budget is because, you know, they may have a budget of only $200 and right. <laughs> from there, that'll help you decide on whether or not you want to sell your entire song for $200. But if they say, no, actually, you know, I have a budget of $1,000 then you may be able to work okay. something out. And you can say, okay, cool. Well, I produced it and I wrote it. So, yeah, that looks good. That's like 500 per, you know, each um, each part of the composition. So, but I just always ask when you're dealing with people who you may not necessarily know if they have the money. You may have some people who are very business savvy. I've had independent artists come to me already with a budget. Look, I only have a budget of $20,000 to make my project. What can we do with this? Okay, we can make a lot of stuff happen. But, you know, per song, I'm going to have to pay producers. I'm going to have to get songwriters. I'm going to have to uh, pay for studio time. We're going to have to pay for mixing, mastering, all of that stuff. So I have to make everything fit in that budget. Do you see what I'm saying? So when it comes down to um, major labels and they may seek you out and say, hey, you know, we want to purchase um, this track or we want to purchase this entire song. They're going to, for one, ask who the producer is. They're going to also ask who the songwriter is. And, of course, ask for their information to try to negotiate a rate that's fair based on what they want to pay. But, again, like we talked about earlier, you have to think about what your cloud is in the industry. Do you have any previous placements? Is this an opportunity? Because the more prominent and more successful you are and the more accomplished you are, obviously, they will be able to pay you more. And you can always have leeway to negotiate. If you are not established, you're not, you know, at that point yet, then it may be a little bit harder to negotiate with them when they're kind of in their frame of mind of we already know how much we want to pay for it. So I would just say keep that in mind when you're dealing with a major situation um, that, you know, you're looking at your value and they're looking at your worth. How much are you worth? Mm -hmm. Right, right. Um, I know this is, I know, I understand the answer that you give. Is it possible to ask the same question? If you were to sell a song, and uh, you thought the song was good, and you're in my position right now, what would you, like, if you, if you just go at a ballpark, would you be, would it be like, are we talking $20,000 to a major label, or are we talking like $5,000 to a major You know what I'm saying? Like, because there's a, the rank, I've, I've heard these crazy numbers for songs, obviously from people that are experienced and things like that, but. You're saying if, if I was in your position, and a label came yeah. to me and said that they wanted to buy my song for their yeah. artist or whatever, do you have any placements? No. Okay. Um, so you, you don't have any placements. They're most likely going to offer you, this is how much we're going to offer, you know, a, okay. a, an amount. 
it is up to you then oh. to make the decision on whether or not you want to take it. Oh. Okay. okay. Now they may say, well, how much do you charge for a track? You know, because you may lowball them. I don't know. You need to determine what your worth is, but just know that if they feel like you need to determine the value of your work, but they're going to think, uh, uh, they, they're not going to, they don't have to agree. They could go back and say, well, we only feel the, the track is worth this much, or we only feel the song is worth this much. That's going to be negotiable between the two of you. Sure. Okay. All right. All right. So we kind of winding down on time. Um, let me try to skim through okay. these questions. You can only sign with one PRO, but you can sign up to have a publishing company for all of them, right? Why would you do this? Yes, you absolutely can. You can only sign up with one PRO if you're a writer or a producer, but your publishing company can be established with both ASCAP and BMI if you have writers who are signed to your publishing company and they ha happen to be with BMI, and then you have writers or producers that are signed to ASCAP and they're signed to your publishing company. You need to be able to have accounts with both PROs so that you can collect on the writers and the producers that are signed at uh, the different societies. So that's why you would do that. Okay, perfect. All right, do you suggest okay, getting perfect. a publishing deal? Um, I would say sign a publishing deal uh, if you have something to leverage. If you do not have anything to leverage these days, it's not worth it. Do you okay. suggest getting a distribution deal? Uh, a distribution deal, depending on how much money they're going to front up front and how much marketing they're going to do for the project would determine whether or not, whether or not it would be a decent um, deal to do. Um, you know, distribution, everybody can distribute their own stuff now. I could go on CD Baby, TuneCore, and distribute my stuff myself. <laughs> so if if that's what you're looking for, you don't have to do that. But if you're dealing with a company who is like an empire and they're going to advance you so much amount of money, plus they're going to throw in marketing for you and you know your project is going to be across social media, it's going to be across, you know, maybe in some different outlets and you know, you'll have a budget for a full marketing campaign and advertisements and things like that. Maybe they'll throw in some press and all that kind of stuff. That's a different thing. That's definitely something to think about. But if it's just a distribution deal for them to distribute you and get a portion of it, that's what you can do on your own. <laughs> and you don't have to give anybody a portion of it. Um, and the last question, oh, two more questions. Do you have to be popular to get a distribution deal, a publishing deal? Typically, if you have great music and it's doing well on the radio, it's been released, it's doing well online, you will start getting phone calls from publishing companies who are interested in exchanging and making a partnership with you. Like, hey, we'll advance you this amount of money for the rest of your release, um, for anything else that you release. But that money is also re recoupable. Like, that's not money for you to have. You're going to have to pay that back as the album continues to stream, as it continues to sell. So, usually people who are popular, who are successful, they do get sought out from publishing companies to do an agreement because publishing is real. It's like real estate. Like the more that they own, the more power that the publishing company has to leverage and that increases their worth. So, you know, it usually happens once you're successful and once you're popular and once you have a name for yourself, which is another reason why you need to make sure you have that credit listed. Remember I was telling you about making sure you list who you are and everything because people can't seek you out if they don't know who actually writes the project, writes on the project. Sure. And then as far as who do you contact for distribution and publishing deals, I mean, there's so many publishing companies out there. There's so many distribution companies out there. Um, I would say do your research. And um, in my case, you know, I'm with a publisher, but I'm like waiting to get out of my publishing deal right now. Like I'm constantly recouping and trying to work on good, good music to release so I can be released out of my publishing contract because it's just, it's not this is not 2002 when I initially signed my first deal. There were not any digital streaming. There was not any different types of contracts that covered you on the digital royalty side, digital publishing side. And so um, when you're in those types of agreements that are fair for you, then those are the people that, those are the, the, the publishing companies you want to contact and do business with who look out for you in that way. But, like I said, it would be best to have something to leverage because you want to make sure that a publishing company that is publishing your work and that is going to be collecting a percentage of your work 
for everything that you sell and stream is actually doing something in your favor. If they're not doing anything for you and they're not going to be able to provide you with anything or any resources, they're not advancing you money and, you know, you're not able to negotiate a fair rate for them. I mean, for you, I wouldn't I wouldn't even pursue it right now. I would just focus on make making great music. Excuse me. <clears throat> I will focus on making great music. I will focus on promoting your music and making sure you have a tied in fan base of people who are supporting you. I would make sure that everything looks clean and professional so that you don't come across as local looking, you know, um, and just really, really focus on branding, focus on, you know, uh, the message that you're trying to get out to your fans, whether it's you or whether it's your artist, know your target market. Because I think that's another thing too, is people just release music without knowing who their fans are. So they're making music and it's not really doing anything because it's not targeted to a specific audience, you know? Sure. Okay. So is there anything and I think there? that's my time. I don't want to take you too much past. Uh, no, it's good though. Sorry about that. Did you have any other questions okay. about anything that we've already answered? No, I think uh, I think you've answered all my questions. Okay, cool. Well, thank you so much. Um, I will send you a brief re recap of um, our consultation just so you you know have notes to take with you. I know you were taking your own notes as well, but yeah, when you're ready to do the next phase, just reach out to me and we'll book another appointment. Okay, we'll do it. I, I thank you so much. I appreciate it. I've been watching your content. It's excellent. I tell people about you and whatnot, so I appreciate everything. Thank I appreciate you. It. I appreciate you. Thank you so much, and continue to spread the love. <laughs> we'll do it. You take care. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hey, guys. So you just had a little glimpse of what my life is like pretty much every day here at the office I do consultations obviously I help people with um, managing their publishing um, and uh, also administrating their publishing but I do consultations too a lot so yesterday I did like three consultations in one day but today this is my first consultation and it's just it's it's noon but yeah pretty much um, just helping people to understand the business and just kind of having that one-on-one -on -one is always a great thing to have because it just makes the process of understanding better when you're talking directly to the person who has a question instead of like you know talking to um you know a group of people and not everyone can answer their questions at the same time so i'm gonna go i'll upload this to youtube you guys take care i gotta take this call bye